All right, so in this video, we have a uh, guest shower. This is the guest bathroom in the basement. Um, I'm gonna start with a couple things here. Originally, when we were, when they, the designer, designer and architect were a part of the whole, this whole thing, so they designed the valve to actually be here. So the valve's over here right now, off to the side, and they wanted it here, and I, I kinda talked them out of it because when you open the door, you don't want to reach. You don't want to be reaching across to turn the water on, and then getting hit by water, or just having to reach in. So it's a lot better to have it when you first open your shower door. It's better to have it kind of like right there if you can. This is more of a design thing. So another reason why the valve is a bit lower here is there's a niche right here for for soap and whatnot, and that's why all of our water lines are going down and over and not going up or anything like that. We have to make sure that they're gonna box this in and put a niche. So we had to make sure we stay away from that. It's gonna be framed in, it's just not done yet. So this particular valve is a real bell valve. You always wanna make sure when you're doing, before you put it in, you gotta make sure you know the thickness of your finished wall because you got a rough wall here. So you're gonna have drywall and tile. And usually we like to just allow for an inch. And then there's always a min max. And we like to put that one inch mark in between that min max, just in case they use a little bit smaller of a tile or a little bit bigger of a tile. You will generally be, you'll always be okay if you just allow for an inch, assuming that they're doing tile. You always wanna know what they're gonna be putting in or what you, if you're doing it yourself, just know what you're putting in. So one inch, so we're, right now we're within that one inch mark. It's right in the middle of the min max. And then in this one, it has, we got ourselves a slide bar and a, thick, a fixed head, it's just gonna be like a straight arm out, like a 16 inch arm with a drop with a kind of like a rain head style type thing. So with these real bell valves, they're meant for tub and showers, but they have a diverter. They have diverters that are built right into them. So the bottom one actually goes over to the slide bar and the top one coming out of it goes right up to the fixed head. So when you go to do the finish, there's actually a diverter built right in it. There's a thermostatic mixing valve and volume control to do the hot and cold and volume, but then there's a diverter to switch from. It's kind of like a three-way diverter. You can do this by itself or that by itself or both at the same time. So Real Bell is actually a really nice uh, valve. They're, it's actually made in Canada too. And then also, it's not, you don't have to do this. If you happen to forget about it, you can always use uh, like drywall anchor type things for the slide bar. We have a slide bar that sits in here. We always like to put backing in, so when you go to screw your, your, your slide bar into the, into the tile later, you have to drill through the tile, and you can use actual wood screws to secure it really good, because those, those drywall anchors aren't always the best. They sit in there, they work half decently, but sometimes they pull out, and then once, once that happens, it's kind of, they're hard to, to fix. So having backing in and knowing where your slide bar is, and what we usually like to do is take a tape measure, and hold it off the wall and measure to the center and take a picture of it so that we know where our backing is when we go to do the finishing down the road. It, uh, it definitely helps because if you forget to do it, you forget where your backing is. All right, so we'll go over kind of uh, locations of the rain head and the slide bar. The rain head is center of the room because generally you're gonna stand underneath the rain head, directly underneath it, so it's center. The slide bar doesn't necessarily need to be center, especially since you don't really want the slide bar to be directly under the rain head because then they're kind of conflicting with each other. So what we usually like to do is offset the slide bar a little bit to the side. doesn't matter which side it is, left or right. Same thing with the drop elbow that the slide bar ties into. The drop elbow can be off to the right or left. We usually like to put it about six inches. There's no exact number for it. So four, six, eight, doesn't matter. But six is a nice number to go off to the side. And then we usually like to line the drop elbow center with the bottom of the slide bar. So when the slide bar ties into here, where you screw it in, it's gonna be in line centered with this drop elbow. And then it comes up to here and then you got your, your, uh, your slide bar rain hit thing so it can go up and down. So what we like to do when we're tying in the valves, the water and anything into the valves, they come kind of preset so you can use iron pipe, like an FIP or a, a sweat. So sweat is just soldering, you put a piece of copper in there. Um, but when you do the copper and you're, you're heating it up, you gotta take all the guts out, so it's just more time consuming. And if you do happen to have to kind of twist something around or whatever, it's nice to have FIPs on here. So we always just use Teflon and dope, and then twist on our F PEX by FIPs. And it's just that much easier. And usually with, uh, especially with Real Bell, you can screw it to your, you can screw it to your backing and then still get your crimper on there around it which is really nice.
For those of you that don't know what an FIP is, it's, it stands for female iron pipe, and it's just a tapered thread essentially, so it's just when you're screwing something on, that's what that stands for, is FIP. All right guys, I hope you got some value out of this. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Uh, and again, this is kind of a standard situation where you just got two, two shower heads. It doesn't have to be set up this way. This is just kind of how this one was done. There's lots of different ways to do it. If you got any questions, please ask us. We'll see you on the next one.